You can't build anything with it. You can't eat it or drink it. But this amazing substance could actually be a valuable natural resource. Hi, I'm Evelyn, and my team and I at CSIRO are investigating biochar. It's made by burning organic waste, but not in a normal fire. That would make charcoal or ash. Instead, it's made in a process called pyrolysis, where it's burnt without oxygen. Different starting materials result in different types of biochar with different properties. There are lots of special things about biochar, but let's start with carbon. Biochar has lots of carbon that is locked away in its strong molecular structure. The carbon also can't be eaten by microbes or released into the atmosphere for a really long time. So this makes it a good method of storing carbon. This is great news for the environment as carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas and is contributing to global warming. But how much carbon is in it? To find out, we run it through a carbon analyzer. We simply put a sample into a clay container and the machine does the rest. After only a minute, we get a graph that shows us how much carbon was in the sample. When we compare the results of different samples, we can figure out what type of biochar is the best at storing carbon. Another thing that we can do with biochar is add it to soil. Some biochars make soil hold onto nutrients a lot better, so farmers might be able to use a lot less fertilizer. To test this, we find out how much of one nutrient, phosphorus, is being retained in the soil. We take a sample solution, place it in a microplate, then add a test solution. If the sample turns blue, it means it has phosphorus in it. So the lighter the color, the more phosphorus stays in the soil. Since biochar is very porous, it can hold heaps of water, which is ideal for plants growing in Australia's dry conditions. And we have a simple way to find out just how much water biochar can hold. We set up a filter with a measuring cylinder underneath. We put a sample of biochar into the filter and then add water. After 45 minutes, we compare the amount of water in the cylinder with the amount we originally added. And the difference tells us how much water was retained by the biochar. To find out the best way to use biochar, we are researching its effect on wheat. We've mixed biochar with soil in a bunch of different ways. Some samples have a lot more biochar than others. Some of the biochar was made from wood, some from wheat chaff, and some from chicken poo. Now we want to figure out the best combination of biochar and soil. Each of these pipes has a biochar sample and a wheat plant. We grow the wheat until harvest stage and compare the samples to see which plants grew the best. This tells us how much biochar is needed and how much is too much. So for something that looks like dirt, biochar looks like a pretty good natural resource to me.